As you would have seen from my previous videos, I've had my fair share of success and failures since starting my journey in 3D printing. So today I thought I'd share uh, the, the procedures and steps that I take to ensure I have the best chance of creating a successful print. In addition to looking at the way I prepare for a print, we'll do a test print and look at the cure settings I use for that particular print. We'll also look at the result of that print and see how it measures up. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to get yourself some isopropyl alcohol. Now I couldn't get any of that locally, so I went for a wax and grease remover from my local auto parts store. As far as I can tell, it's actually made from isopropyl alcohol and works very well at removing any grease or wax from your print bed. Give the print bed a good wipe down, making sure to remove any old print residue. If the bed needs a little assistance drying, I just wipe it over with a clean dry tissue. Once your bed is clean, it's time to apply some spray adhesive. It's the same procedure. Spray some onto a tissue and apply it to the print bed. You don't ever want to spray directly onto the print bed as the overspray will build up over time and make a mess of your printer. Now that your print bed is clean and tacky, it's time for step three. In step three, we raise the print head clear of the print bed. Navigate your way to the move setting and raise your print head on the Z or Z axis. 50 millimeters is a good amount. Once the print head is in position, we're ready for step four. In step four, we preheat the nozzle to 210 degrees and wipe the nozzle clean with a tissue or paper towel. If you've never done this before, you'll be surprised how much gunk comes off that nozzle. Now remember that nozzle is very hot, so be careful not to touch it with your fingers. Once that's done, we're on to step 5. For step 5, we navigate to the quick settings in the menu and select cool down. Once the nozzle has had a chance to cool down, we can move on to step 6, which is leveling the bed. When it comes to bed leveling, after much experimentation, I've settled on a method which gives me the most consistent results and I now use feeler gauges. The gap I set my nozzle and print bed to is 0.08 millimeters. When fanning out the gauges, I always make sure I can also see 0.07 and 0.09 as it's very easy for two gauges to become stuck together and you can't detect the extra thickness by feel. When sliding the feeler gauge in, you want the gap to be enough so that you can feel the nozzle dragging on the feeler gauge when sliding back and forward. You don't want too much drag where the feeler gauge is starting to bend and you don't want too little friction where the feeler gauge moves too freely. After adjusting the bed, always check that you can still slide the feeler gauge in. If the feeler gauge is blocked from entering, the gap is too small. If the gap is set correctly, you should be able to slide the gauge back in while still feeling some drag from the nozzle. Now that our bed is correctly leveled, it's on to step 7. And in step 7, we raise the print head back up 50 millimeters. We do this in preparation for loading a print file. When the nozzle is heating up, there's a chance that some filament may start extruding. Having that gap allows the filament to extrude and be easily removed. And for our eighth and final step, we load a print file. In this case, I'm loading a 20 mm test cube created in Blender. While this file is printing, we'll look at the Cura slicing settings I have for this particular file, and after the print is done, we'll have a look at the finished result. Now after watching that, you may be thinking it's a pretty complicated process. But if you've ever started a print only to watch it warp and lift, you'll appreciate spending those extra few minutes getting the job done right. Now let's have a look at those Cura settings. Looking at the settings for my cube, we can see I have the layer height set to 0.06. The shell thickness is 0.4, which will give me one, one layer as the, the nozzle is a 0.4 nozzle. Um, the bottom thickness is 0.3. I wanted five layers on the bottom and top. 
um, and 5 times 0 0.06, my layer height, equals 0 0.3. Fill density, as a, instead of 25, I wanted a fairly dense infill. My print speed is 50. My printing temperature is 195. There's no support and no platform adhesion type. If we look at the different options we have there, we have brim and raft in platform adhesion type. If you leave that set to none, the uh, Cura will default to a skirt type fill, which will put a perimeter around the edge of your model. My diameter is, is 1.75, that's my filament diameter, and the flow is set to 100. Now I've made a few changes in the advanced tab, um, mainly in the, or well, two changes really, uh, the top and bottom speed I've set to 15 instead of 30 I believe it was just to slow that down uh, I want that to really slow down and, and give it a chance to bond to the bed and the initial layer line width I've set to 110% that was set at 100 also I want that bottom layer to be a little a little bit wider other than that the, stand, the settings are the basic default settings that came with your cocoon create um, Cura software. And the last option uh, that we need to look at is the expert settings. And from here, the changes I make are the Z hop when retracting. By default, that's set to zero. So I like to have that set to 0 0.075, just so it lifts the printer nozzle as it's um, moving to another part of the, of the object. And the other thing that I'll change here from time to time is this black magic setting, uh, spiralize the outer contour. What this does is switches the, um, the print to the phase mode where it just is one continuous print, uh, one continuous um, path that it follows to form the outside of the print. Um, other than that, I leave all, all the other settings as they are. Actually, there is one other thing I do. Uh, we'll go back to expert settings. And that's the skirt. I've set the skirt line count to five. The start distance, three millimeters away from the object. And minimal length I've left at 150. So the skirt is what um, I, I prefer to print with nowadays rather than brim or raft. Um, once you have your bed adhesion down, sticking very you know sticking pretty well uh, skirt for me seems to be the the best option okay so let's take a look at the quality of this print corners are nice and sharp everything's printed really well very happy with the bed adhesion that's looking good but the real test will be to see how accurate Blender was. I made this model in Blender at 20 millimeters cubed. So each side should be 20 millimeters in length. Let's see how accurate Blender and the Cocoon Create printer combined actually are. Twenty millimeters. Twenty millimeters. Twenty millimeters. All sides measure at exactly twenty millimeters. Extremely accurate. Very happy. Although this video is only nine minutes long, it took many hours to make. But if it only helps one person, it will have been well worth it. If you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching. I hope it was of value to you and I'll see you next time.